What's up guys? Back out here in the shed today. See we're working on a 22 street live, the 114. We're gonna put a big old hog cam in there. But first we're gonna roll the intro. And we're back. So we're gonna go over some of the basic tools you're gonna need to do this. Um, basically, there's gonna be an assortment of stuff for depending on what bike you're working on. Um, so we got just a socket assortment here, littler ones, a couple of long allens, the ball allens I like using, impact just to make it faster, coming apart. Set of feeler gauges, cheap little cam lock tool, and a torque wrench. Um, gonna be cam. For us, we are using SNS's 475 cam. Let's open it up. And we are going with the chain drive. Just a really nice looking cam. My favorite M8 cam. Put it in multiple bikes so far. We got Field Moto's adjustable push rods. These push rods use your factory push rod tubes. Saves a little bit of money if you don't need new tubes. And then a new O-ring kit for the push rod tubes. And obviously the install kit you guys already seen. And uh, that's basically everything you're gonna need to kill a bike. So let's. All right, so we went ahead, we did a jump cut. I went on a time lapse, taking the exhaust and the air cleaner off because that's different on every bike, unless it's stock, it's one of the stocks. So I probably could have did that pull a video on it, but you already got like a nice two in a one or a dual true blue exhaust and a point air cleaner. It's gonna be different. So I'll waste time doing that. So now we're gonna get into our push rods. And at this time would be a pretty good time to go ahead and jack the bike up. You can't really see it. So you need the rear tire in the air. Um, yeah. In Milwaukee you get obviously you get the four spark plugs. Go ahead and pull your two outers out on the other side. And then we uh, get the push rods. So come with me. All right, now that we're all up close and personal now, we're gonna go right back through. Push her in there. And go ahead and twist it out. Just like uh, the previous videos, you watched my other videos, I'll show you how to do that. And like that, we're using the field mode of push rods. So these ones we're gonna keep. Alright, now we got all the push rods and everything all up. Now is the time when you need your bike in the air again. Get it in sixth gear, and we're gonna be looking for overlap. We need the base slope of the cam so that way we can cut our push rods. So we're looking for the overlap where both push rods are moving. One's in the up travel, one's in the down travel. We have that. And like I said, these ones right here, we're going up and down. We're safe to cut the front. So let's go ahead. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're gonna go ahead and right there. Right there, we have our overlap. We have both of our push rods are moving up and down. So we're good to go ahead and cut these front ones. Let's go ahead and get the old bolt cutters out. Get your fancy bolt cutters. I'm right, gonna go ahead and put them in there. Give it a cut. Or a pinch. 
go ahead and cut it. And you make sure you get your push rod out. And the tubes, like I said, we're keeping the tubes. We were using those. And like I said, we're going to use bolt cutters. You don't ever want to use a grinder or a sawzall. You don't want to get a bunch of metal shavings down in your lower engine case. You're probably never going to get them all back out. When it goes to the oil system, it's going to be a rough day. So now we're just going to go ahead and cut the other front one. And then we're going to find the overlap again and cut the rear ones. All right, not the front two out of the way. You can put your fingers right down inside the hole. And you can go ahead and roll it until you get your overlap. You'll be able to feel both of them move. Just like right there. Down both movements, we're going to go ahead and cut these rear ones. All right, now the push rod out of the way. We'll go ahead and take off our tappet covers. And that, we're just these little quarter inch bolts, the Allen bolts, typical Harley bolt. And then a 3 Allen. And go ahead and take all those off. All right. So now we got push rod out of the way, our tappet covers out of the way. We got these tappet cuffs out. They're just a little alignment tool. You're gonna need your uh, fancy, I can read that or not, three eighths. And you're gonna be really easy taking these off. This is a really, really small bolt. And you don't wanna break it. So take your time. This one goes right in the lower case, and it's not a very fun time if you break it off. That's all it is, just that's that little plastic one I was telling you about. Um, we're gonna order some SNS ones for this bike. We haven't done it yet, but I just talked to him. We're gonna some SNS ones just because that's that billet aluminum, a lot nicer piece. If you're already doing this far into it, you might as well change that too. We're gonna pull up these junk lifters, tap it. Yeah, they are. Speaking of that, I need to throw the new ones in some oil. They gotta soak overnight. Well, now that we got the whole top all taken care of, we can go ahead and take off our cam chest cover. We have those, those quarter inch Allens again, the 3 16 I'm gonna go ahead and break them all loose with the ratchet. And I'll zip them out with the impact after that. So, let's get to it. If you, if you forgot, you're going to want a drain pan right now. We're going to get a little bit of oil out of here. So it pops free. Last one. Switch over to the And this bike, we are utilizing our factory oil pump and cam plate. Also, I believe that after 2019, 2020, they went ahead and they, uh, Harley Motor Co. themselves updated their cam plate and oil pump. So, not really a necessary thing to change out, but you can if you want to. 
you plan on making more power, this is just a cam bike, so it should be fine. Let's toss these over here first. Let's go ahead and give it a pop. She's stuck. Your rubber hammer, a dead blow, and just give it a pop on the side. It opens up. Like I said, see we got a lot of a lot of oil coming out of there. Not too bad. But let's uh, come a little bit closer, would you? All right. Now that we're a little bit closer in here, here we got our timing chain, got our gears, tensioner cam plate, oil pump still back behind there. This is when you're gonna need one of them there fancy tools just to slide in here and lock it in place. And all it is is these little cheap tools. Jim's a little more expensive. You can get this one right here off of Amazon for I think it's less than 20 bucks and it just interlocks the two gears together just like that so now we got our tool in place we can go ahead and we can get our T27 we can remove our tensioner tensioner off. You want to inspect it if you're reusing it like we are. So you want to check out that shoe guide. This bike isn't too bad. This bike has got less than 5,000 miles on it. We're going to go ahead and see so we have a little oil feed here and the oil feed comes into here. That's what puts more tension or less tension on your tensioner for your train. Now the tensioner off, we can focus on our timing chain. And the cam sprocket bolt is gonna be a 9 16 And your crank bolt is a half. Go ahead and remove those. And before you completely remove the bolt, you don't want to get both of them broke free. And in the, the video description, I will go ahead and post the exact torque specs and everything so that we are not playing the play pause play pause game when I mention those or we're going back through to install all of this. Let me go ahead and remove that now. Make sure you remember which washer went where. You have one on the crank bolt, you have one on the cam bolt. On top of that, you're going to have them. All right, now that shit out of the way, stuff out of the way, sorry for the language. We can go ahead and just more of those quarter inch Allens 
I'll go ahead and break them all free. Right, so these are all the cam bolts. And then if you were going to be replacing both, you could leave these four in and then that would just keep the oil pump with the cam plate. But because we are reusing our cam plate and oil pump, we're gonna go ahead and remove them separately. So we're gonna go ahead and break them all free. And we'll go back through again with the impact just to zip them out a little bit quicker. Well, like I said, don't forget to uh, go ahead and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really helps. I'm trying my best to uh, get some more content out. Every I'm shooting for every Wednesday. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work out that well. But yeah, I mean, like, subscribe, share. It all really, really helps. I appreciate it. I would go ahead and remove all of this. I'm going to take the cam out with it. So there's our stock cam. That's that cam bearing back in there that I was talking about before. Hopefully I'm not blocking it. We're going to replace these O-rings also. So you can go ahead and remove that O-ring. The one behind the oil pump also. Also, when you're grabbing your oil pump, it does split right here in the center. So you want to grab it behind that split and pull it all off. See, and I did not get it off all at once, but that's fine. That's what your torque spikes are for. And those are all your oil pump drive gears. So it's got two flats on the crankshaft. That's what drives these gears and it pumps the oil. And that's what shoves it through all the ports. Remove the next o ring for the oil pump feed, and that's the whole removal. And then this is where you get your tool out if you have it. And you finalize these four bolts with a tool. I'm not going to show you because it's going to be there's no really way of me showing you, but uh, it goes in, it grabs the bearing. And it pulls it out and then to install it you take those four bolts out you flip your plate put them back in and you put the bearing on it and it just drives it in i'm gonna go ahead and get some of this cleaned up and we'll get back to the install all right so there's our empty cam chest remember to grab all your o-rings all out we're gonna grab the upper o-rings out of the push rod tubes also i haven't done it yet but i will so, got us all empty. So, here's everything all apart. So, we're keeping the push rod tubes. The lifters are junk. We're gonna just toss those. Um, the lifter cuffs, I can't stress this enough. These are cheap plastic, hardly fucked up. All right. They fucked up. Those are junk. Never use these. All right. It's like 75 bucks for some nice SNS ones that you've seen in a previous video. They're on their way for this one. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, make sure you pull the O-rings out of your tappet covers, lifter covers, timing chain. So you're gonna go through and make sure all this stuff's all sound. Stock cam, um, we're gonna throw it away. All the bolts are gonna cleaned up. We're gonna run a tap. We're gonna run a tap through everything just to clear out all the old, all the old Loctite. Um, but yeah, um, here in a minute, I'm gonna bring up 
some pages that you can go ahead and screenshot for the torque sequence of the cam plate and oil pump. Instead of me sitting here pointing to each and every one of them, we're just gonna do a really quick time lapse again and you can just screenshot that. So you can sit there and look at it. Um, torque specs may be in the screenshot. If not, they will for sure be, for sure be in the description. I'll have everything. I'll have the first pass of your cam plate, first pass of everything, uh, and then second pass of everything. I'll have your tap it box. I'll have the torque clip for those, for the cuffs. I'll have it all in the description. So that way you can just go down there and screenshot that off. So um, definitely a lot easier than me putting it up in a corner and it's only there for 30 seconds for you to look at and then hit there. Go ahead and drag back and try to find it again. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this cleaned up a little bit better. Um, make sure you have some assembly lube. You're gonna want some. I use good old Lucas. Um, I know SMS sells some, Amsoil sells some. There's a bunch of them out there. Just, it doesn't matter what you use, just use it so you're not dry starting anything. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start putting our fancy new stuff in there. Let's see how good I can do this with one hand, but you can see inside there, you got the flats and you got your flats. And it's really important to get that spout all the way inside that lower O-ring. So let's go ahead and see. Alrighty, let me our cam plate here. When you're putting your cam back on, when you put your cam plate back on, you wanna make sure we get plenty of assembly lube inside the journals here, okay? You can kinda see that little cutout. That is right where the crank rides. And then the front one, doesn't have a cutout because your oil port and it just squirts a small film of oil and that's where the cam rides. That's what keeps it lubricated. That's why there's no outer cam bearing. We're gonna go ahead and lube that up. We got our cam lubed and then we're gonna slap her back in. And then we got our cam, our cam plate. We're gonna slide them in together. Bam. All right. Yeah, I'm in there. We go ahead and just, we're gonna put all our bolts back in. We're just gonna finger tighten them for now. All right, guys. So we got our cam plate in. We got our oil pump in. We gotta go through and torque it off. But now is the time that I told you I was going to go ahead and show you the screenshots. So there will be the first one. There's our sequences. All right, so I skipped ahead and I got my cam plate and oil pump okay i got my oil pump already torqued down with the first sequence all right so you're going to start with your oil pump all right and some of them like this here a new one is labeled you can see it one two three and four all right that's the order you're going to go in with your oil pump you're going to do one and two first at 
12 to 60 inch pounds and then you're gonna do one full revolution. So watch your flat, do one full revolution and then you can go ahead and tighten up three and four and then you can bump it up to the 90 to 120 inch pounds. And tighten up one, two, three, four. And then from there, you're going to do your 90 to 100 inch pounds with the uh, with all the rest of the bolts here. And it's all in the picture that you should have screenshotted. But again, there it is. There's your torque specs. So like I said, you're going to first, you're going to do your one and two. Okay. 12 to 60 inch pounds, full revolution. And then from there, you're going to do three through eight. So you're going to do three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you're going to finish out your other four. That's when you jump into the rest of your oil pump. And then after that, it's just the 90 to 120 throughout the whole thing. All right, next step, we're gonna be putting on our sprockets. Sprockets without the chain, no chain. So we're going to go ahead and put them on here. You're gonna to torque them to 15 foot pounds. Um, we're gonna put a smaller washer on our cam bolt. This guy right here, normally it has, right there, a big fat washer. You're just gonna use any washer you have that's even half that thickness on there. And then, yeah. All right, so again, we got them all on there. We're gonna use your cam lock again, just to uh, go ahead and lock them in place. going to be torquing them 15 foot pounds. And both of them for 15 foot pounds for this. Now, what you're gonna want is you're going to want a nice straight edge. I use feeler gauges for this. And all we're doing is we're checking the gap. We'll make sure that both of them are lined up perfectly. So I always get the old feeler gauges out. Just to check the gap. Or if you don't have a set of feeler gauges, which you need to do this job anyways, Uh, get a caliper out. That's also a straight edge. That's a longer straight edge. And you're just checking to see if you have any gap in between the two sprockets. You want to make sure that you're measuring on the splines on the little T. You don't want to be too far back because there is a little ridge which this one is perfect 
So you can go ahead and remove your bolts back out. You can put in, you can put your chain back on them. And we're going to retorque them. So make sure you put your correct washer back on. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to retorque them to the correct torque spec. We also, uh, we're going to need red Loctite. And then we're going to tighten them both back up to 15 foot pounds. And then you're going to back them off a full turn. And then we're going to retorque them again. The camshaft is 34 foot pounds, crank is 24 foot pounds, and you want to put red Loctite on these. All right, so one more thing I forgot to mention is we're going to want this here flat, facing upwards on the crank. And then there's also a fat tooth on the camshaft that you want to be facing upwards and you want the dots to align on your timing chain. Two dots on the sprockets. And then you can go ahead and install those. And now this is where we'll be putting our red Loctite on our bolts and starting them. And when you get them snugged up by hand, we can go ahead and put back on our lock tool. And then we're gonna torque them both to 15 foot pounds. We're gonna back them out one full revolution, 34 foot pounds, 24 foot pounds. All right, we can go ahead and put our chain tensioner back in now. Usually I like to start one. Get it started. And you can push it. Get it collapsed. And you can start the second one. These are T27s, they're going to be 60 inch pounds. After that, we clean up our gasket surface, put our cover back on, our gasket, and those are another 60 inch pounds on all those also. We'll go ahead and do that and we'll get back up top. guys Logan here back on white shark customs um, another day for me five seconds for you but uh, we did get our SNS tappet cuffs so we can go ahead and finish out with the installation of our push rod assembly uh, we are using fuel motors push rods I don't know if you can see it or not but uh Fuel motos, they're labeled for the exhaust and intake. They're both 24 threads per inch. So for every inch of threads is 24. Um, these are the push rods you can use. You can use these push rods with your factory push rod tubes, but they do come with all the new O-rings for the tappet covers for your uppers and for the uh, the push rod sleeve itself. Um, I went ahead, I got some oil, and I went ahead and I lubed up all the threads all the way through, just to make everything slide together a little bit nicer. Um, so that should be everything. Um, you're gonna need your quarter inch Allen back out or your 3 16th Allen for the quarter inch Allens we have. Uh, you're gonna need a half inch wrench. You need two of them for adjusting the push rods for the jam nut and the push rod itself. 
And then you can use the 5 16 for the push rod to adjust it. Uh, sc screwdriver to replace the clips. And uh, you're gonna need a torque wrench for, we got 60 inch pounds on the tap it cuffs. And I'll have to relook up the uh, tap it cuffs covers. But I want to say it was 135 inch pounds, I'm pretty certain. But uh, let's get to it. We're going to go ahead and get your lifters out of the oil that you're soaking. And we can drop those in and we'll get you guys a little bit closer. All right, now that you're a little bit closer, we can get up close and visual. You can't really see this side, but you can definitely see the front cylinders. So we'll start there. So first, you're gonna get your lifters out of your oil that you're soaking in. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, get some oil in the bores, just that way we know they're ready to rock. And then we're trying to carefully set the lifters in place. You don't want to just drop them in. Try to carefully slide them in place. And then from there, we can go ahead and get your fancy SNS Tappet cuffs. And they are labeled, um, you can see the F right there. F is for front, R is for the rear, obviously. And uh, go ahead and set those on. Start the bolt and a 3 8 socket and a torque wrench okay. with using the 0, zero 5, which is uh, 0.13 millimeters. And you should just tuck it in the back in the behind the front lifter. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see. and torque it. Put your feeler gauge in place. And that's 60 inch pounds. There we go. So now you're just going to repeat the same process on the other side. All right. Now we got both of them all set up. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find our base load with a cam, just so we can get a little bit better visual of what it would look like. Which looks like we're right here. Let's go ahead and move you guys so you can see it. Um, you can see these two are just above the tappet cuff. And then the back two over here, they're inset down inside the tappet cuff. We got them both moving. Let's try to... You can see that. So they're on the overlap cycle. So them being on the overlap cycle, that means we're good to go ahead and place our rear push rods first. So let's go ahead and get set up. We gotta get our, we got our tap it covers on first. Um, new gaskets, 60, 100 and, 135 inch pounds on these guys. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Now we got tappet cuffs covers on. We can go ahead, get a push rod, put it inside the tube. I said, make sure you get some, get it lubed up, get it placed. And you can get your push rod all the way up in there. 
And then you want to start to, you can see it. So we're going to spin it out. And usually it helps if you use like the rubber band trick. But you're going to head and you're fully decompress your push rod. All right, so we got our push rod tool in there. All it is is mine just a piece of tie wire or a band, push rod up. And we're gonna adjust the rod, like I said, all the way out to where you got zero lash. I got a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and get our half inch wrench and our 5 16ths back out. And we're gonna go just a little bit more. Right there, it's still wiggled back and forth, but there's no up and down motion. There's no up and down motion. So for these push rods, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark a flap so you can get a Sharpie or a paint marker or whatever you need to go ahead and know where you're at. And with these ones, we're going to go three and a half turns. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold our push rod and we're going to turn it another three and a half turns to let the lifters bleed down. So there's one. Two. There's three. And there's a half. Run that jam nut back up, just hold it up there. Now we're gonna let it set for about 20, 30 minutes. And you should be able to turn it again with your hand. There'd be no up and down motion, but you should be able to spin it with your hand with a little bit of resistance. And then that would be good to go. And you move on to your next one. That's the whole process of doing the push rods. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you the rest of them because there's no need when we got that far. So that's the basic overall how to do a cam in your Milwaukee 8. Um, forgive me, the video is probably not my best video. Um, I try to cover most of the basics and most of the stuff you guys are actually gonna wanna know. Um, if there's anything else I skipped over that I didn't show you or you wanna know, go ahead and shoot it down in the comments. Um, besides for that, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button. It really helps out. And uh, until next time, stay classy, keep the shiny side up. Later guys.